The Roman Empire Forever living in our history books, known as the greatest civilization to grace the face of the earth. Glorified for their amazing military, to their complex political structures, and their amazing works of architecture. But perhaps their greatest build of all time was the Circus Maximus, the largest sports stadium ever built. It is believed that it was founded in the 6th century BC by the 5th king of Rome. He erected the general outline of the stadium, but it was truly reached to its distinctive shape and prevalence around the time of Julius Caesar. The stadium was painstakingly built by slaves who used a mixture of wood and stone to erect the massive building. The U-shaped building had seats on three sides and a low wall running down the middle of the arena, keeping the spectators safe from the spectacles. At the time, it could seat an estimated 150,000 spectators, and was enlarged by later emperors. It reached a maximum size under Constantine in the 4th century. It was roughly about 600 by 200 meters with a seating capacity of roughly 250,000 to 300,000 people. The biggest of all time. It's rumored that another 250,000 people could watch the events unfolding on the surrounding hills, which meant that even when Rome was at its biggest extent, about one-third of its population could conceivably view events unfolding within the Circus Maximus. Apart from the theaters and amphitheaters, Roman circuses were the most important centers of entertainment in the Roman cities. They were extended precincts in which public games were held to entertain the masses and celebrate victories. The Circus Maximus was described in the 7th century BC as one of the most beautiful and admirable structures in Rome. The most popular and common events held at the time were spectacular chariot races. This exceptionally large track was the perfect place for these epic dramas to unfold. Chariots would be by teams of four all the way up to twelve horses. Victorious charioters would not only become rich with large cash prizes, but they also became the darlings of the crowd, particularly those with who had placed bets, which were at the time astronomical. This was no easy task though as the races were extremely dangerous. Competitors often would turn in front of one another, hoping to force a collision and cause their opponents to wreck. To gain leverage, the charioters would often wrap the reins around their wrists, bracing his body and steering by shifting his weight. In the event of a crash, he could only extricate himself by cutting the reins with a sharp knife, which was carried in the straps of the torso lacing. But if competitors weren't quick enough to cut the reins, the risk of being dragged or caught under the wheel was very real. The most famous chariot racer of them all, with more than 2,000 race victories, was Scorpius. He gained absolute popularity throughout the empire alongside his horses. Another crowd favorite were the infamous gladiatorial shows, where armed men fought each other in violent, often mortal combat for fame, fortune, and even freedom. The gladiators would often first train at a professional fighting school to prepare for their debut in the arena. Originally, these schools drew their recruits from among their lower ranks in society, slaves, convicts, and even prisoners of war. But by the first century AD, contracted free men, retired soldiers, and even, on rare occasions, women participated in the fights. The games could also be used as a form of public execution for condemned criminals, who were brought to the arena to be crucified. They'd be put down by the sword, but the biggest crowd pleaser was when they were killed by wild animals. It was under the rule of Crassus and Julius Caesar, that Romans witnessed for the first time many foreign and exotic animals, especially crocodiles, hippopotamus, tigers, lions, leopards, and other large quadrupeds fighting for their lives amongst desperate men. On the extreme scale, the Circus Maximus was even used for mock battles to reenact large victories. Julius Caesar and Pompey Magnus strove to outdo each other with ever-growing ridiculous splendor. To make room for this in the Circus Maximus, the goals were taken down and in their place were two camps which pitched over against each other. The most extreme battle ever recorded had two opposing armies comprised of slaves, in which 500 infantry, 20 elephants, and 30 cavalry fought on each side to the death as crowds cheered on to this awesome spectacle. 
This gigantic stadium had witnessed over 1,000 years of the greatest shows of the era, but alas the time had come for it to retire. By 541 AD, Rome had fallen to the barbarians, and increasing political instability led to factional violence. No more councils were appointed and the burden of sponsoring the races fell to the emperor. But there were other demands on the imperial purse, and the last race in the Circus Maximus is recorded to have occurred in 560 AD. The circus fell into disuse and decay. The lower levels, ever prone to flooding, were buried and gradually accumulated debris. As of today, the original track is buried 6 meters beneath the modern surface. In the 11th century, the circus was replaced by dwellings rented out by congregations of St. Guy. Today, you can visit the ancient ruins and marvel at the once truly great Circus Maximus. Thank you for watching today's video. If you enjoyed, please consider subscribing, and hopefully, we will see you in the next video.